Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Lance and today we're going to talk about some of the technical aspects of one of the largest pieces of cut content in Bloodborne and the process through which I was able to restore it. This is a topic that I've already covered in some detail previously but I've been meaning to revisit it for a while to come up with a much more elegant and complete solution and I figured some of you might be interested in following along with how I did this. With that said, let's have a talk about Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower. Despite appearing alive and well on the front cover of the game and also on the cover of the official strategy guide, when we finally meet Maria in the Astral Clock Tower, she appears to have been long dead. With this being the case, I'm going to begin by revealing everything hidden by the developers in the room where we make this discovery. I've moved some things around a little just to make it easier to show how many things are unseen in this room. Here is Maria's corpse, which is normally sitting in the chair. Internally, it has a small note placed to it, reading, Talking NPC Clock Tower Hunter's Corpse, as if killed by the Seeker of Secrets. So already, it's obvious that there were events planned to take place in this room, upon which we've missed out on seeing. By the way, in case you're not aware, the character Simon we encounter throughout the old Hunter's Expansion pack is internally named Talking NPC, Seeker of Secrets. With this in mind, it's safe to assume that we've been forced to skip a sequence of events where Maria would have been able to have a conversation with the player, and we've instead been railroaded into an outcome where she has been killed by Simon. More than that though, there is another unseen corpse in this room. It looks exactly the same as the one that normally appears, except it has a different description, this one reading, Talking NPC Clock Tower Hunter's Corpse, as if killed by the player character. And to top it off, another living version of Maria is loaded into this room, although entirely invisible, beside whom a note reads, Talking NPC, the Clock Tower Hunter in the boss room for speaking with. Just to show everything possible, also hidden in this room is the boss, which is eventually revealed after Maria's cutscene plays. Her internal note reading, Boss, Clock Tower Hunter for combat. Now let's just revisit how all this actually plays out in-game, which is admittedly without much depth. When we first arrive at the research hall, we encounter Simon the Harrowed, who delivers the following dialogue. Oh, hello. Not a pretty sight, is it? The true face of the blood-worshipping, beast-purging, healing church. But that's not all. You seek the secrets held by the nightmare, do you not? Then here's what you must do. Climb the astral clock tower and kill Maria. She hides the real secret. Go on. Kill Maria atop the astral clock tower. She hides the real secret. We proceed through the research hall and come to the astral clock tower, finding Maria already dead and strangely her corpse is internally noted as having been killed by Simon. If we return to Simon, he just reiterates the same goal until we interact with Maria's dead body. Go on. Kill Maria atop the astral clock tower. She hides the real secret. This initiates a boss fight, after which her corpse and Simon the Harrowed disappear entirely. A corpse should be left well alone. So if the game is fast forwarding through some series of events, bypassing an amount of content that can possibly appear in this room, is there a way to wind it backwards? Well yes, the encounter with Maria is set up by an event called Clock Tower Hunter Initialization, which checks the state of three flags in your save file and then creates the result we come to see in the game. The flags that are checked are, is Maria alive, has the player killed Maria, and has Simon killed Maria? For whatever reason, in the final game, these are always set to Maria is not alive, the player did not kill Maria, and Simon did kill Maria. So in order to roll back the quest line that has been skipped, I took a consumable item and rewrote its code. I made it so that anytime the player crushes a vermin, these three event flags, which are being checked, would reset to their default position.
quitting the game writes these changes to my save file, meaning that this mod is entirely save file resident and could be applied through a rudimentary PlayStation 4 save editing program. Now with this much more elegant solution, having simply reset just a few event flags in our save file, we find her seated in her chair alive without modifying or breaking the game's logic. Let's have a run through her conversation tree. Hmm, a visitor. How unexpected. Then the secrets of the church have been laid bare. Good hunter, lost in a nightmare. What did you think of that beastly legend and those ailing wards of the church? I know what you did to them. It's not your fault. The nightmare held them, and now they are free. But what about you? Have you profited at all? I thought as much. Nightmares and secrets, they'll only get you so far. Now you can leave this place. Have respect for the beast hunter Gammon's wishes. Besides, you will not find your enemies here. Take the relics in this room as your parting prize. Let them be your strength. And return to your hunt, good hunter. What's wrong, my hunter? Don't you hear the hunt calling? Or do you wish to tease something more from the depths of this nightmare? Even if it means my murder. Hmm. Look at you. That glint in your eyes. Her voice lines are rigged differently depending if the player character is male or female, with some of the subtitle text being missing in one case. Hmm. A visitor. How unexpected. Then the secrets of the church have been laid bare. Good hunter. Lost in a nightmare. What did you think of that beastly legend and those ailing wards of the church? I know what you did to them. It's not your fault. The nightmare held them, and now they are free. But what about you? Have you profited at all? Oh really? Well, that's a relief. Now you can leave this nightmare. Have respect for the beast hunter Gammon's wishes. Besides, you will not find your enemies here. Take the relics in this room as your parting prize. Let them be your strength. And return to your hunt, good hunter. What's wrong, my hunter? Don't you hear the hunt calling? Or do you wish to tease something more from the depths of this nightmare? Even if it means my murder. Hmm. Look at you. That glint in your eyes. With her correctly restored now, when we kill her, something new happens. The inspect corpse prompt actually appears in real time, and it's now accompanied by a glowing item on her lap. Now I've also gone ahead and re-implemented her unused dialogue into the cutscene that follows this, including a whole different take of every spoken line she has, so let's enjoy a wholly unused version of her cutscene speech here. You girl are insufferable. Oh, I know very well how the secrets beckon so sweetly. Only an honest death will cure you now. As you might assume, that first line she has changes depended on the player character's gender. You boy are insufferable. From this point forward, everything proceeds as it normally would in the final version of the Old Hunters expansion pack. However, there's something else we need to take a look at. We recall from her original corpse that it's possible oh, for I Simon to kill well. Maria here instead of the playable, and that outcome too is now available to us. 
So as we saw when we first arrived at the research hall, Simon told us to kill Maria. Go on. Kill Maria atop the astral clock tower. She hides the real secret. However, now he has a little more to say. Once we find Maria alive and speak to her, we can leave without killing her. Hmm. Look at you. That glint in your eyes. If we do this and return to Simon, he'll chastise us for our choice with some new dialogue that was actually cut from the game. Go on. Kill Maria atop the astral clock tower. Can't stand the thought of cutting her down. How positively naive of you. <laughs> With this done, he decides to take matters into his own hands. If we leave the area and return, we'll notice that he has left the area, and running to Maria after this means we'll find her dead, with the original, as if killed by the Seeker of Secrets corpse in place. A corpse should be left well alone. From here, as you can imagine, the boss fight can be triggered and the game proceeds just as it does in the final product. In the end, I'm glad I did revisit this topic as being able to reactivate such a significant oh, piece of cut well. content using only a small patch to a save file, restoring it back into the campaign and having no negative impact on the flow of the game, really makes for a far more rewarding experience. As for the reasons that this was cut in the first place, or what it might have meant for the story, I'll happily defer to Sinclair Law's channel, where you'll find all sorts of discussion about the more obtuse angles from which Bloodborne and its various plot elements can be approached. You'll find a link to her channel in the description. I hope you don't mind too much when a video focuses more on the technical minutiae rather than pulpy helpings of unseen content, but after spending so much time hacking around inside the game, it becomes a process I often want to share. If you did manage to enjoy this video, feel free to let me know by hitting the like button, and if you are interested in following my work, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can find more ways to follow or support my work in the description of the video, but either way, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.